it's Charlie from Daily Motor, and today we've got the sound system demo on the 2022 Infiniti Q50 and its 16-speaker Bose audio system. This is going to be an in-depth review. We're going to take a look at how the infotainment system works, take a look at audio inputs, adjustments, controls, speaker locations, and then we're going to head out onto the road and listen to these sample tracks while we're rolling, and I'll give you my thoughts at the end. Now, if you don't care about any of that stuff at the beginning and you just want to hear the music, click ahead in the video. We've got chapters to get you right to the tunes. And if you're tired of hearing the same songs week in and week out, sign up to become a Daily Motor member. We shot a members only sound test on the Infinity Q60 with a very similar system. So if you want to check that out and see more on the system, check the links in the description. Before we get started, let's hop out and take a look at it. Still coming in here strong, 2022 model year. In fact, actually this is a 2023. I'm so used to saying 2022s. Oh, look at that, we've got a light up emblem. Interesting. <laughs> I'm so used to saying 2022s, but this is a 23, although you wouldn't really know much of a difference between a 2, 22, or a 21, or 20. They're all pretty similar, but this Infinity Q50 still has a lot to offer, so if you do want to see more on it, check the links in the description. We've got a good amount of videos to go for you. Now, we always do these tests with lossless, uncompressed WAV files on a USB stick plugged directly into the system in high-quality Roland binaural microphones in both of my ears, giving you the most realistic audio system demo on YouTube. I recommend listening with headphones so you can hear exactly what I hear in the driver's seat. We also do the test with the sound settings set to their factory defaults, so let's take a look at those now. If you do want to see a more in-depth look at this two-screen setup, check the link in the description for our infotainment test on the Q60. I'm pretty sure we shot that. If not, then... That's gonna be a bit awkward. But you do have the same two screen setup we've seen for a while, a little bit more of a matte touch screen up here and a shinier touch screen down here. We're in the media screen, go left here to sound settings. Adjustments for bass and treble, let's go through those. bit of adjustment there. Below that you have adjustments for front, rear, left, right, fader, and balance. And after some volume uh, for voice guidance and beeps, that's about all you have. So surprising not to see any sort of mid-range adjustment there or even a Bose center point. Something to create and turn on and off sort of a 3D surround sound effect. But that's what you get here in the Q50. For audio controls you have a nice volume knob here smack in the middle for both the passenger and driver to control. Driver's also got left side of the wheel up and down volume rocker there. For track selections, you've got physical controls here or here, tune, seek track. You can use the touch screen if you're on the media screen or again, left side of the wheel to toggle through tracks right by the volume control. For audio inputs in the Q50, this is a fun one because we have a bunch. You have your standard AM, FM, Sirius XM, satellite radio, USB-A and USB-C with support for wireless and wired Apple CarPlay, but only wired Android Auto, Bluetooth, a 3.5 millimeter auxiliary input jack right there, and a disc player. So quite a lot of inputs there. What does that mean you're missing? Well, no wireless Android Auto and no sort of streaming services built in. So you're not gonna have your Spotify, your Pandora, your Apple Music coming through this system, but still nice to see some of those old school inputs. Speaker locations. As I said, this is a 16 speaker system. Starting in the bottom left, you've got door woofer here, one, mid-range two, tweeter three, Three mid-range-ish tweeters up here, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine on the other door. Coming into the back, you've got a woofer tweeter combo here. Let's see, that was nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 on the other door. And then in the deck lid, we've got 14, 15, and a subwoofer back there making 16. I do think the system would benefit a little bit from a trunk mounted subwoofer, but this one's not too bad. All right, well, with all that out of the way, Let's fire this thing up and get out on the road.
turned itself down there to tell me something, but I, I didn't speak loud enough for me to hear what it was. mid-range here, woofer down there. It's, it's very straightforward and with the three speakers in front of you, you're getting a nice sound stage as well. Where people are gonna be disappointed in this system is its lack of creativity. At the end of the day, this is a Bose performance series, which means it's top shelf speakers, top shelf tuning. There's a lot of effort put into the system, but you don't see that in the interface, in the sound. It's not a very creative or gimmicky sound, but it's a very turnkey product and I think some people are going to really appreciate that. You get in your car, you plug something in, it just works, it sounds good, you don't have to change any EQ setting, settings or whatever, but when you're talking luxury cars, people want gimmicks, they want 9-band equalizers, they want tweeters that rotate out of the dash, you're expecting something cool. I still don't know what this thing is trying to tell me, maybe construction or something. So I like the sound, but it's, it's a bit harder to fall in love with even though it is quite good. It's just a little plain. So this next song, we'll turn the bass all the way up and see if we get any distortion.
wrapping up my thoughts on the Infinity Q50's Bose Performance Series sound system, it's like the opposite of the Mercedes EQS that we recently tested. The Mercedes, very crazy, very special, a lot of gimmicks, but not a super satisfying and well-balanced sound experience. This is the opposite. This is a nicely balanced sound system. It sounds good in a lot of different types of music. You can turn up more complex music. You can just turn up basic pop. It doesn't matter. It's going to sound good. It's just not very impressive from a system standpoint, from a, a usability standpoint, or even a sound standpoint. You're not being awoken to different elements of your music that you've never heard before, but you can turn up your favorite songs really loud and enjoy them. And I think for that, it's just Chris wants to give it a B. I think it deserves just the lowest, lowest A minus. We're talking 89.6% right here. I guess it'd be 89.5% would be the lowest you could go and get an A minus. But it does sound good and I do enjoy using it. And some people are really gonna appreciate the straightforwardness and the many different inputs. It's just, mm, it's just lacking that pizzazz. So thank you all so much for watching. If you do want to see more on the Q50, that's also very good, but lacking a little pizzazz, check the links in the description. And we'll see you on the next one. I'm Charlie from Daily Motor, and as always, drive on.